Good morning, everyone. Before we begin our worship, uh, just a quick reminder that uh, we are to keep our mask on throughout the service, all right? And, um, but you can sing, okay, with the mask on. All right, let's spend a few moments of silence as we prepare to worship the Lord. Listen to the call to worship taken from Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2. The psalmist says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Indeed, we are gathered here this morning to worship an Almighty God, a powerful God. Let us rise and let us sing. Our opening hymn. Almighty and Sovereign Lord, we humbly come into your holy presence, fully acknowledging that you are God and we are not. Only by your grace do we come as sinners, saved through the blood of Jesus. Today we commemorate the day of Pentecost. We pray that just as the outpouring of your Holy Spirit on Pentecost so drastically changed the lives of the disciples. May the burning fire of your Holy Spirit refine and renew us and change us from within to be more like Jesus. May we move in the power of the Spirit and may our lives and ministries be infused with your divine supernatural touch and authority. May the spirit of wisdom and revelation cause us to grow in our knowledge of you. For this we pray in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Let us now enter into a time of silence as we bring to the Lord our personal confessions and after which we'll join in the corporate prayer of confession uh, shown on the screen.
Come, let us collectively bring our prayer of confession together, as shown on the screen. Gracious and loving God, your Holy Spirit is always with us. You encourage and strengthen us, and you send us out to serve you. Your grace is sufficient for every need, yet we often doubt your presence. We wonder where you are in all that happens in this world. We struggle with trusting wholeheartedly in your love, power, and goodness. We fail to keep our hearts centered and our minds focused, spreading the good news of Jesus, the crucified and risen one. Forgive us, rescue us, empower us as your redeemed children. May we seek to do your will for the sake of your glory. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen to the words of assurance of pardon taken from Romans chapter 5, verses 8 to 11. It says, But God shows His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by His blood, much more shall we be saved by Him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies... We were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. Much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by His life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. And amen to that. Welcome to our 845 uh, service at Princep Street Presbyterian Church. And it's really great to see uh, everyone here today. And indeed, very pleased to see more and more people coming back to our service. I wonder if there are any of us worshipping here for the first time uh, at our church. You can just raise your hand. We'd like to welcome you. Anyone? All right, not today, okay. And, oh, yes, hi, yes, praise God. <laughs> yes, welcome, welcome, yes. Yes, welcome. And we have, uh, uh, oh, your second Sunday, welcome, yes. <laughs> and we have a uh, welcome back for you. Anyone uh, worshipping with us, um, who you are a member, but you first time you're coming back to church, we'd like to welcome you as well. Anyone? Yes? No? Oh, okay, you've been here for many weeks already. Okay, very good, <laughs> right? And today we want to also specially welcome uh, Reverend Rich Orr and Connie. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I think later there'll be a bit more formal uh, introduction to them, yeah, but, you know, it's, it's really great to have them uh, back with us today. Um, and, and those online, right, if you're joining us for the first time, um, and, and for the newcomers here as well, um, you can scan this QR code, uh, provide us a little bit of your uh, contact details, and we'd like to connect with you and get to know you better, and also for you to know us uh, better. All right? Now, um, every week when we come to this portion of the service, which we call the exchange of peace, we are reminded that it is God Himself who initiated the reconciliation back to Him, just as we have heard in Romans 5, right? And in the same way, we are to reconcile with one another. So in the act of exchange of peace, this is exactly what we are doing, passing on God's peace to one another, right? So let us rise now and let us pass God's peace to one another. You can do a fist palm or whichever way you want. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you for doing that. And as you know, um, <clears throat> our fellowship hall is, is open and uh, tea and coffee are also being served. There's also breakfast. So do um, stay behind uh, after the service and uh, catch up with one another. All right. 
Okay, let us move on to uh, the next part of our service. Um, the next song that we are going to sing may be new to some of us here, but it's a simple song, a song that expresses um, or reminds us of God's grace. It acknowledges that it is only by God's grace that we have been called by His grace, we have been saved, and it is His grace that will carry us through our life's journey until we reach our eternal home safe in the arms of Jesus. Right, so um, I'll, the, the worship team will sing the first verse and then invite the, the rest to join in uh, for the second verse, okay? Um, if you know, just sing along, all right?
Let us now continue our worship as we bring to the Lord our offerings. As usual, um, if you would like to present your offerings by e-giving, you can scan the QR code. Or if you want to give physically, uh, the offering boxes are at the exits here, so you can drop in your offerings uh, on the way out. And uh, for those at home, if you prefer to um, give symbolically, right, you may put your offerings into an envelope, keep it until the next time when you come to join us for worship, you can give it um, into the offering boxes, or you could also send a check um, to the church office. Right, let us um, just contemplate for a few moments as we present to the Lord our offerings. Let us rise for the doxology. Father, you are the God who sees and you know our every need. You have so graciously provided everything we need, both physically and spiritually. So here we present to you our offerings out of the gratitude of our hearts. Would you accept and bless them and multiply them for your kingdom's work? And would you accept us as we offer to you ourselves as living sacrifices, that our very lives would be a true and proper worship to glorify you. For all this we pray in the name of our Lord and Shepherd Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed morning, my brothers and sisters who are gathered on site and online. We bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. The church leadership, camp committee and congregation warmly welcome Reverend Rich and Connie all back to Singapore. Uh, they are here in Singapore for three, week, three weeks uh, from 1st to 21st of June and congregants uh, may greet them over three Sundays uh, beginning from today. Uh, we give thanks to God for the friendship and the fellowship and the partnership that we have with the Oz. And we pray that their time in Singapore will be a joyous and blessed time uh, of uh, reconnecting and uh, rejoicing in the partnership that we have in Christ. Uh, they will now come forward to greet the congregation. Let us put our hands together to welcome them. Well, we are definitely excited to be back among a family that we love and uh, have enjoyed for so many years. We also are a little bit anxious. Learning all the hundreds of names, trying to memorize them once again was a, a, a task. We're going to forget some of you, but please help us with that. And we are so grateful and thankful for the partnership that you have given us over the years. So you're going to hear more from me. So now you can hear a little bit from my sweet, sweet better half. Yes, you all know we're here this particular uh, 
month because Ridge was invited to be your camp speaker at the end of the week. Um, and I was counting them up last night. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that this is our 11th PSPC camp. I think we had 10 previously and this is number 11. So uh, we should be really well acquainted with this procedure. But we are excited. The, the other reason we are here is to give you thanks for years and years of generous financial support and many, many sustaining and encouraging prayers. And so we're a little bit unusual as in terms of missionaries because most missionaries are American missionaries. They serve in Asia if, if that's their field. Then they go home to the U.S. to thank their supporters and their partners and their, um, their prayer partners. But we are kind of the opposite. You know, we serve in the U.S., and then when we want to thank our supporters and our partners, we come to Singapore because we get about 60 percent of our support, our financial support from Singapore, especially from PSBC. So this is the second reason and very important reason that we're here is to thank you for years and years of loving care. And um, a lot of you know us, but not everybody knows us, so I thought I would back up for just a minute and give you a little bit of background. We came to uh, PSPC in 2003 after spending 19 years as missionaries in South Korea. We were here for eight years, and we left in 2011 to go back to Ridge's um, hometown, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Now, the great thing was that we didn't have to resign from OMF to continue serving the Lord. Um, there's a Chinese church in Pittsburgh that uh, welcomed us onto their team, um, and we would never have been able to join that team if it weren't for our eight years here at PSBC because the team is called uh, OMF in the last 15 years started a ministry called the Diaspora Returnee Ministry and it's uh, people who are um, ministering to a East Asians that are outside their own national boundaries and so we were able to join the DRM team um, because of, as I said, because first we came to PSBC and we began to um, do the outreach to the Chinese here. Because normally you can't join the team if you can't speak Chinese. And we, as you know, cannot speak Chinese. But they, they looked at what we had done here and they said, okay, we, they, they can join. So they made an exception of us. And we are thrilled to be continuing to reach out to Chinese in the Pittsburgh area. We do three um, Bible studies a week with visiting students and scholars, mostly scholars. They're only in Pittsburgh for about six months or a year or two years, and then they return to China. And uh, we're thrilled to be able to reach out to them. And you've been a big part of that through your support over the years. So we're excited to be here. and. We really do look forward to serving as your partners in Pittsburgh for many more years to come. Thank you for the invitation. So we want to give thanks to God for the awesome eight years of ministry in Singapore. And after that, we had 11 years of partnering them in missions and many more years to come. Uh, when congregants come and look forward to gr greet them, uh, please do offer your name because we are all masked up. But do not be surprised that they remember your name. Before you can even offer your name, they might actually remember your name. And uh, Reverend Rich All will also be conducting communion later on. So uh, at home, congregants, pre prepare your um, communion elements uh, in time for communion later on. Next slide. So we are all looking forward to the church camp. And it will be on this coming Friday, Saturday. And we request all campers to arrive here in PSBC by 9.30 a.m. And we will all gather here in the sanctuary, at level one here. And for bus group arrangement, uh, please refer to the uh, FAQ. And the summary here is that you are supposed to follow your own uh, cell group. If you are not in any cell group arrangement, please visit the church camp booth uh, at the fellowship hall today and they will arrange uh, some uh, make some arrangements for you for lunch on the first day on friday a bando lunch will be provided 
uh, for all campus. But on day two, on Saturday, it will be free and easy so that you can get to go out and eat lunch uh, nearby. For dinner at Jordan Hall on Saturday evening, uh, campers are requested to form tables of 10 people and then sign up at the church camp booth at the fellowship hall today. And for parking arrangement, we encourage congregants to come by public transport because um, the limited lots here are for less mobile congregants and for camp committee members and duty personnel who need to come earlier and stay on later. Uh, but we encourage you to come uh, by uh, public transport because I don't think you want to pay parking for the whole day here uh, in the town area. Yeah. So please refer to the uh, FAQ on page 3 of the bulletin if you have any other questions, especially uh, children's program and any other questions that you may have, um, you can actually refer to FAQ or speak to the camp committee uh, out, uh, at the fellowship hall. Okay. Moving on, uh, Daisy will come forward to uh, publicize the Father's Day movie event that's coming up in June. So I don't have to introduce myself to Pastor Rich and Connie because <laughs> you know my name now. Right. Um, for Father's Day this year, we're going to do something different. So on Saturday itself, there's a movie with Dad and the family. Don't just need to bring Dad. You can bring your Dad friends, dad to be, uh, future sons-in-laws also can. Yeah? And friends, friends, please. Um, the movie we are filming is Show Me the Father. Uh, on the 18th of June, which is a Saturday, 2 p.m. upstairs at the MPH. Um, if you can write at the bottom corner, that's the QR code. Please sign up um, as soon as possible uh, so that we can gauge. And um, reminded by Doris, as you all know, anything that has got the ladies' ministry stamp of it, there's food involved. So come early at 1 o'clock. Light refreshments will be served. Thank you. Moving on in the announcements, today is Pentecost Sunday, amongst the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the church in both Acts, an occasion for us to give thanks to God for the presence, the gifts, and the works of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's also a very special occasion for us to um, encourage congregants to join in the third run of the spiritual formation group for us to inculcate uh, spiritual formation practices to enhance and nurture our spiritual life. So please sign up with Preacher Dawn by today. Uh, today is the deadline. Next announcements. With the conclusion of the PSBC annual congregational meeting and the constitution of a new EDC, the EDC expresses our thanks to Elder Jonathan Koch for completing his two-year term as session clerk. Uh, Elder Wilson Ting is appointed this new session clerk with effect from 1st of June. And the EDC has also approved the minutes of the ACM. So, communicant members, if you wish to request for a soft copy, you can write to the church office. For the rest of the announcements uh, listed here, uh, please refer to the e-bulletin, which can be downloaded from the uh, church website. And these are the prayer points for our congregational prayer this morning. After the prayer, we shall uh, sing the Lord's Prayer. Let us prepare to go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty Father, we give thanks to you for your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. For in and through his death and resurrection, we are reconciled back to you. And given a new birth, on this Pentecost Sunday, we give thanks for the presence the gift and the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives so that we may experience our adoption as children of God to be led into oneness of truth, unity, ministry and witness. May your Spirit continue to do a mighty work of reviving us, inspiring us to live for your kingdom purposes. Lord, your kingdom purposes are advanced by those whom you have called and empowered to serve your people. We give thanks for the friendship, the fellowship and partnership with Reverend Rich and Connie all. We give thanks for their safe arrival in Singapore and pray that their three weeks here with us will be a joyous and blessed time of reconnecting and mutual encouragement. Lord, we now pray for the church camp that starts this week as well as for the Chinese camp over these two Sundays. We ask for the Spirit's anointing 
to be upon Reverend Rich Orr, as well as the Chinese speaker, Dr. Nehemiah Quack, so that the camp messages was, will be truth that is sealed upon our hearts, that you will speak and minister to the strongest in our lives and transform us towards greater faithfulness in our journey of discipleship. We also uphold the camp committee, the Sunday school and the Prince Lighthouse as they finalise the respective programmes. Lord, your spirit bring us together in oneness and unity and call us to be unceasing in our prayers. So we rejoice with Raymond Wu and Amanda Leong, as well as Jonathan Fong and Cassini Kong Tong as they unite in matrimony. We pray for God's blessings upon their union and that they will build their marriage on the foundation of God's word. We also rejoice with Samuel Ng and Ik Peng as they celebrate the arrival of their second child, Olivia Grace. We pray for God's blessings and, bless and wisdom to be upon the parents to bring their children up in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. Lord, as we rejoice with those who rejoice, we also mourn with those who mourn. We uphold Julie Fu and her family in prayer as her husband, Mr. Andrew Chi, was called home to be with the Lord earlier this week. Comfort them by the great promises in God's word. Surround them by the presence of your spirit in this time of bereavement. Lord, you call us to be a holy priesthood to intercede on behalf of those who are suffering in this world. And even as the world continues to battle against COVID-19, there are reports of outbreak of monkeypox. We uphold the World Health Organization and health authorities in affected countries so that they may closely monitor and contain the outbreak. So for the sick and suffering in this world, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us spend a moment of silence to intercede for ourselves and our loved ones. God, we give thanks for hearing our prayers, prayers offered in Christ's name and through the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. Let us sing the Lord's Prayer. As we forgive those who trespass against us And lead us not into temptation But deliver us from evil For thy is the We'll be reading the, some passages um, from Scripture later on, focusing on the Holy Spirit. So in preparation 
to receive God's word. Let us sing the next song meditatively. Let's remain seated, right? And I will sing it as a prayer to God. Scripture reading today is taken from John chapter 16, verses 7 and 8, and then 12 to 14.
John chapter 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Verse 12. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the word of the Lord. It's a great pleasure to speak to you on this Sunday. It's a normal Sunday. Uh, Sunday after Sunday, we come here. But today is a very special day uh, for, two, for two reasons. One is that today is a birthday. Whose birthday is it? It's the birthday of the church. The church was born on Pentecost Day. The other uh, reason why I'm very pleased to be here is that uh, I'm in my local church. There's a church universal. In Singapore, there are about a thousand other churches like this meet on Sunday, but this is my own home church. Now, it is really a home church uh, because I've stayed longer in this building than in any of the six or seven homes I've stayed in before. How long have I been in this building? Can you guess? How many years have I entered this building? It's 70 years. And how come I entered this building? It was because of the Boys' Brigade. And that's why I'm wearing a Boys' Brigade tie today. Uh, a friend of mine in my neighborhood in Newton asked me to join the BB, and I followed him here. He was in the same school as I was, I think, the Raffles Institution. But I remember when I came to this building, I was shocked by a surprise. I came from a Methodist church, Palibar Methodist Church, where the church is visible. The doors are open to the public. You can see inside. You can walk in and out. But this church is enclosed by four walls, and they're actually uh, brick walls. You cannot see the church at all from the roadside. You have to discover where is it, <laughs> this church. And why? That's because this church was built in a Malay village, and uh, security was important. There were all sorts of people staying around. And so to make it safe, the builder of this church in 1930, he was a British architect, he designed it such that there are four walls around it. There was a Malay chapel before this, from 1843 to 1930, where there are no walls. But the walls came in because 1930 was the year when there was a World Great Depression. Many people were unemployed. So security was, a, was the main concern, and they built the four walls. But you know, the four walls gave a sense of security. And I'm very glad, I think it was in 1955, that this church obtain a Chinese name. Before, there was no Chinese name to this church. Now, what is the name chosen? I remember that the person who chose it was uh, Dr. Zhou Bianming, who was a lecturer in Chinese at the university. If you read outside the name of the church in Chinese, the word used is Pan Shi. Now, what does Pan Shi mean? Pan Shi means rock. So it's a symbol of security. So this church is actually the rock Presbyterian church. If you think of the Chinese character, don't think of the English character. The English character has no meaning. We don't know who is Princep. But we know what's rock. And rock stands for Jesus. So in a, in a very profound manner, I realized that this church 
is a rock, and it is my home church for 70 years, and I've seen my children baptized and grown up here. And in fact, my own son and his two sons are also members of this church here. So I'm very glad that I have this opportunity to speak on the Holy Spirit. Because when I was given this topic, I had to ask myself two questions. Now, what questions should I ask when I'm given a, a topic to speak about? Now, I then thought of my church manager. The manager of this church is Mr. Chu Wai Hao. I don't know where you met him, he's a very wonderful guy. And uh, he comes here every Sunday, although he's actually from Glory Presbyterian Church. I think he attends church twice on Sunday. Uh, because whenever I see him, I ask myself two questions, why and how. <laughs> That's his name, why how? So whenever I see him, I ask him, why do you do this and how do you do this? The questions come automatically to me, what to ask him, why and how. So greet him, he's a wonderful guy. I'm so glad he has made this church his uh, home as a manager. So today's passage, the next slide, will tell us why and how Pentecost. Now who gives the answer to why and how? Jesus himself gives the answer, why and how. Why did the Holy Spirit come and it is set there straight away? In the first passage, if I do not go, the helper will not come to you. Jesus must go away and then the Holy Spirit will come. So the why is because Jesus is going away and therefore the Holy Spirit will come. If Jesus did not go away, the Holy Spirit will not come. Now, what is the meaning of the phrase, go away? Now, when you read this chapter of John, you may get a bit confused because this chapter deals with the time of Jesus before he was arrested and tried and found guilty and then crucified on the cross. So it was not referring to him going away to be tried by the Roman court. What was the phrase going away mean? For that, he must jump three days after his death on the cross. He rose from the dead and then he walked on this earth as a resurrected person. Now, how long did Jesus walk on this earth as a new man, the first of all creation, the new Adam? 40 days, Jesus walked on this earth as a resurrected person. What happened on the 40th day? Ah, that is when the answer comes. Jesus went away. Where did he go to? The 40th day after Easter is the Ascension Day, the day when Jesus rose up to heaven and he sits us on the right hand of God. Jesus was on the right hand of God for 10 days. On the 50th day, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. So Jesus fulfilled the promise that he, he would go away and when he, he goes away, the helper will come and the helper is the Holy Spirit. So the word spirit is come in the second passage. It says there, when the spirit comes, who is the Holy Spirit? He will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. Whatever he hears, he will speak and will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me for he will take what, what is mine and declare to you. So we are thankful that Jesus left this earth ascended to heaven, but now we have the Holy Spirit. Now, on the 50th day, the Holy Spirit came. Now, this day is Pentecost, and we read in the second slide what happened on the day of Pentecost. It says there that when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. Now, who were they? And what is this one place? 
This one place is Jerusalem. And who are they? They were all the Jews. But were they Christian Jews? They were not Christians, not all of them, some of them. Who were they? And why were they gathered on the 50th day? Because the 50th day to the Jews was not after Easter. It was after Moses gave the Ten Commandments. Uh, it was after Moses led the people out of Israel and they were at the foot of the Ten Commandments. The 50th day is when Moses gave the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai. The people took three days from Passover to escape from Pharaoh. Then they spent 50 days on foot walking towards Mount Sinai. On the 50th day, they were at Mount Sinai. That is Pentecost. So all the Jews were gathered to celebrate the giving of the Ten Commandments by Moses on Mount Sinai. That is Pentecost. That's the first Pentecost, a Jewish Pentecost. The word Pente means 50. So it was on that 50th day that Moses gave the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments declared that God is holy and therefore everybody else must be holy, those who must be holy. So it's a very important day for all the Jews. Now this Pentecost day was 2,000 years ago, but it was 1,300 years after Moses gave the Ten Commandments. Moses gave the Ten Commandments roughly about 1,300 BC or 1,400 BC. But for the 1,300 years, the Jews faithfully observed the giving of the Ten Commandments on Pentecost. Pentecost was a Jewish festival. They were all Jews, and they were gathered to remember that God delivered them from Exodus, from slavery. God freed them, and God led them through the wilderness to appreciate God as holy. The Ten Commandments show that God is holy. But now, on this day, the anniversary of that day, God did something else. God showed that not only is he holy, but God is going to be inside you, inside me. For that, we must appreciate that God is further revealing himself who he is. In the Old Testament, we read of God the Father. He's revealed many times. Uh, in the New Testament, we read of God the Son. We see his life his, on earth. He was born of a woman, grew up in a village. But where the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit was there. And in the New Testament, from Acts onwards, you read the full disclosure of the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? Why was he kept so long, hidden, so to speak? Now, here we come to the truth that the Holy Spirit was there at the very beginning. The next slide reveals the quotation from Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. The whole earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the earth, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. The Holy Spirit was there in Genesis 1, at the creation of the world. He was there with God the Father. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit was there. And we read in Colossians chapter 1 that God the Son was also there. So the the whole Trinity was there when the earth was made. That is how old the Holy Spirit is from the very beginning, beginning of time. So it's not an afterthought that the Holy Spirit suddenly appeared. He was there from the beginning. But why was he hidden? Because God cannot reveal his full greatness at one time. It's like a, a blazing light. You look at the sun, you will be blinded by the sun. So God revealed himself stage by stage. God the Father comes first in the 39 chapters, 39 books of the Old Testament. God the Son comes out in the 27 chapters, uh, books of the 
New Testament. And God the Holy Spirit comes in the second part of the New Testament, in the letters of Paul and Peter and the Acts of the Apostles, the letter to the Hebrews, and so on. So that God is, understands us. We are sinful in his eyes. Bit by bit, God must show himself. And God kept the Holy Spirit hidden until the day of Pentecost. And God chose the day of Pentecost because it reminded them of the Ten Commandments that God is holy. So the holiness of God in Mount Sinai is now complemented by the innermost nature of God, God the Spirit. And that is why we read that the Holy Spirit can now do very powerful things. Let me ask you, what do you value most about God? When I look at the sky, I can imagine God there. Uh, and uh, Psalm 8 and many other places in the Bible talk of God's in nature, God's in the creation. You can see God everywhere around you. Just take a walk. That's God in front of you, in the sky, in the water, uh, the people around you. Then, when God wanted to further distort himself, he became a man. He became a baby, like you and I. He grew up a toddler, learned how to walk, learned how to do things by himself. That is God with us. God above us, God the Father. God around us. God with us. God the Son. Jesus is God the Son with us. He empathizes with us. He knows all our troubles, our worries, because he became a human being like you and I. Although we don't have an image of him, we don't know what he looks like. But he was like you and I. But how can God become closer to us? Ah, then he must enter us. He must enter your spirit and my spirit. That is God, the Holy Spirit. Now the question arises, how do you know that God, the Holy Spirit, can enter you and I? It's unheard of. You can't enter me. I can't enter you. Uh, you talk to any married couple. <laughs> uh, they, will, they can confess to you quite honestly that although they've been married for many years. My wife, and I, my wife and I are going to celebrate our 40th anniversary soon. We're actually still quite unique, quite different from each other. And we cannot enter each other. I cannot know her thoughts and she doesn't know my thoughts. Uh, they know all about us. We know all about other things. But to enter to another person is almost impossible. What did God do to ensure that the Holy Spirit can enter you and I? This is found in the next slide. God breathed into man the breath of life. The Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. The Holy Spirit is the breath of God. The Spirit is the breath of God in you and I. The Holy Spirit is God the Spirit entering into your spirit and my spirit. Everybody has a spirit. If you're a living being, you have a spirit. This is the basis of all uh, preaching, all teaching, that when we give the word, the spirit is listening to the word, to God's word. God's word is being preached from here, but there's a spirit in you, and the spirit is willing, it can absorb what is being taught from this pulpit. This is the fundamental basis of all evangelism, all church activity, and so on. That everybody has a spirit. But some spirits are, of course, corrupted. Uh, and uh, we, we know there are many religions in the world. Some of them have turned aside. They don't know the true God. So their spirit has to be co corrected, has to be taught. And that's what, I, what and many in my work in the Bible Society, we, we learn the importance of what's called pre-evangelism. You just don't go and preach. You must prepare the ground. 
And in Singapore, as you know, the early missionaries, what they did was they built schools. Because schools prepare your spirit to accept God. The, the school character formation, uh, the, the background and so on, enables the spirit in man to receive God's spirit. So God breathed into every human being a spirit. Uh, sometimes we encounter hostility from other people. Their spirits have gone dead or moved away from God. But their spirit is still there. As long as you're a human being, you have a spirit. And uh, many times I've uh, done my part, helpfully, people on their deathbed, they can still receive God. The Spirit is in them. The Holy Spirit can still speak to them. So, what does the Holy Spirit do? Now we come, therefore, to the next part, where actually I, I need to go back to uh, the, the, the third slide, uh, the day of Pentecost. Uh, what happened on that day? When the Holy Spirit descended on the 3,000 people who were gathered in one place, they're all Jews, the Holy Spirit went into them. And the Holy Spirit reversed a curse which God had placed on the whole human race. Because in Genesis 10, we read that the people in the earth all spoke one language, and they wanted to build a tower to reach up to heaven. They wanted to be where God is. They could all speak to each other. They built a tower up to heaven. And God dispersed them. God broke them up, gave them different languages. No longer can each person understand another person. And now we have about 4,000 languages in the world. Three to four thousand around that. The Bible has been translated to only about three to four hundred. We are still going on the Bible translation to reverse that trend. But what happened at Pentecost is that all the different languages were still there, but now they can understand each other. Imagine, just read the verse there. Tongues of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Imagine, you can still pick your own language and you can utterly understand another person's language. So there's no need to go, to go to a translation school and learn a new language. God can enable you to understand another person speaking a different language. The punishment at the Tower of Babel is now reversed. Now, all human beings can understand each other with the Holy Spirit. The whole world can become one again, but there's a difference. It's not one to rebel against God. It's one to praise God, to worship God. The, the, the unity of understanding each other is centered around knowing God. That is the reversal of the Tower of Babel. So God has accomplished a reversal of the punishment which he imposed on them at the Tower of Babel in, in, in Genesis 10. Now you see how powerful this message is because Peter explained what happened, that this gift of tongues is not just linguistic ability. He said, the spirit will descend on you. I will pour my spirit, he quoted Joel, and all your sons and daughters shall prophesy. So a, a tremendous reversal takes place. The whole world becomes united again, but united in God, not united in rebellion against God. No more shall people quarrel against each other. I don't know whether you realize how much problems is caused in the world because we all speak different languages. Now, even if you speak English, I mean, there's Singapore English, there's American English. I, 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 I met people who just don't understand each other, although they all speak English. Because there, there are many ways. Chinese too. You think that Chinese is one language. Just think that 
Chinese is not actually Putonghua. Uh, it's not your heart language. Your heart language is actually your dialect. And Singapore has many eight, nine, ten dialects here. That is your heart language. So when God reversed the dispersion of the languages, he gave them all a knowledge of the heart language of other languages so that there's a unity of heart, not just a, a, a speaking the same sort of grammar or alphabet and, and so on. Now, how can God accomplish this? How can God enter your spirit and my spirit? Because the Holy Spirit is a goal between God. For, for many years, I was not interested in the Holy Spirit because I was reading the King James Version. The King's Version, King James Version lasted from 1611 to, uh, I think, uh, 1970. Then came the first of many English translations, the NIV, Good News Bible, and now we are the ESV. Because the King James Version used the word Holy Ghost, and I don't like ghosts. So whenever I saw the word Holy Ghost, I just switch off. My whole Bible was nothing but the Holy Ghost, repeated over and over again. So I just switch off. I just forgot about God. I forgot about God the Father and God the Son. But when a new translation came out, uh, I could understand it well. So it's much better to read Chinese. Chinese is only one word, Shen, for spirit. You don't have to worry about ghosts and all that. Uh, it's a much more healthy language than, than English. Uh, but we can't blame the King James uh, translators for, for, for doing that. Yeah. So, when we have the Spirit, the Spirit can reunite people because God is now a go between God. The phrase, the go between God, is found in a book written by John Taylor. He was the Bishop of London, I think published about 50 years ago. And the whole book is about the Holy Spirit, but it doesn't appear in the title. It says the go between God. It's a God who goes in between. So you have the Spirit, I have the Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes into you and me. The Holy Spirit is the go between God. And whenever we meet, we, we want to know whether the go between God can enter the listener and the speaker at the same time. So we must pray for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Many years I used to worry, how come I go to church service, listen to the sermon, uh, and so on, and nothing seems to go into me. Then I realized I forgot to ask for the Holy Spirit. When you ask for the Holy Spirit, when you listen to a sermon, a message, when you read the Bible, it comes, becomes alive, because the Holy Spirit is there. And the Holy Spirit is listening to God, the Father speaking, God the Son speaking. And, and, and so, by the, having the Holy Spirit in you, God is inside you, connecting you to other people, connecting you to God the Father and God the Son. The Holy Spirit comes from both God the Father and God the Son. That's something that's a dispute who is more important in giving the Holy Spirit, but actually it's both. God the Father, God the Son, send the Holy Spirit to connect you and I with God the Father and God the Son. And the Holy Spirit himself connects God the Father and God the Son. Uh, uh, we read this in the next slide. Uh, because Jesus himself was baptized with the Holy Spirit. It says that while he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit came down in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came down from heaven, you are my own dear son, I'm pleased with you. Jesus himself asked for the Holy Spirit and allowed himself to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. And that's why you notice that Jesus, after this, his ministry became very powerful. He could connect with people. He could connect with the rich and the poor, the sick and the healthy. Uh, the despised and the accepted because there was a connectivity in him. The Holy Spirit was in him. So whenever he did anything, any action he did, any words he spoke, the Holy Spirit connected him to whoever he was ministering to. It was a connection. Jesus had this connection. 
because Jesus had the Holy Spirit in him. So if you ever bother, why come I can't, I can't pass across a message uh, to, some, to, to a, my own family or my friend? Have you asked for the Holy Spirit to give you that connectivity, that uh, ability to empathize, ability to cross barriers, linguistic barriers or whatever it is, emotional barriers, psychological barriers, which prevent you from connecting. Jesus had no problem connecting. It's only that he was rejected. He, he always reached out and he could connect. But some people didn't want him. But that could be helped. But he did connect because he was empowered by the Holy Spirit to connect. He had the power of connectivity because the go between God was, was inside him. So the first blessing of the Holy Spirit is the ability to unify people, connect people. But now I come to a second help the Holy Spirit gives. Because remember that what I said earlier, the passage from John 16, that Jesus said the Holy Spirit is a helper. Holy Spirit is not somebody who is going to uh, obstruct you. He's going to help you. But how are you going to help you? The second way God helps us with the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit gives us various gifts. I began by saying that the Pentecost is the birthday of the church. Now, what, is, what do you look forward to birthdays? You look forward to presents, right? Uh, and the more people you invite, the more presents you get. And so we always go all out in celebrating birthdays. So the Holy Spirit gives gifts. Holy Spirit doesn't just come to connect. The Holy Spirit blesses you with one gift, with another gift, and so on. Now, this passage from 1 Corinthians says that there's only one Spirit, there's only one Lord, one God, but then there are many gifts. To some, is given the spirit of the utterance of wisdom. To another, the utterance of knowledge. To another, faith. To another, gifts of healing. To another, the working of miracles. All these gifts are meant to build you up. Now, one thing I have a problem in my celebrating my birthdays is that whenever people come and they give me gifts, they actually gifts which I don't want. Uh, I mean. I already have it before, but they don't know what I want, I need. <laughs> so sometimes I, I, I give away gifts. Uh, but the Holy Spirit gives you to make you unique, to make you very special in God's kingdom. Because you are unified, all of us are unified now under God. But it's like a body. So not everyone can have the same uh, characteristic. I'll read a book on the human body. I discovered that I think there were about 100 trillion cells in the human body. Imagine, you know, some of us, we go through life, we want to be a millionaire. When you look at yourself in the mirror, you are a trillionaire because the number of cells in your body is more than one million, one billion, one trillion, 100 trillion, whatever it is. Yeah. So each of us is given a gift, very special, to make you unique. There's no other person like you in the world. And God gives you gifts to make you unique. But gifts can divide. You read this list of gifts. You notice that there are some gifts which are sort of rather quiet. Uh, uh, let me refer to the gift of wisdom or the gift of faith. Very often, I, I do not know who is the gift of wisdom or faith. Because they're very quiet. Uh, but sometimes, if you have the gift of knowledge, it can be very noisy. <laughs> you boast of what you know and don't, what you don't know. And I, I'm a bit afraid of people who have too much of the gift of knowledge. They like to show off. I think in 1 Corinthians 13, it says that uh, knowledge puffs up. And it's true. Yeah. But then, if you come to wisdom and faith, they're very quiet gifts. And, and many people, many times, I I met people who have wisdom and faith, and I don't know their wisdom and faith because you must talk to them, you must be transparent, and then you can just find out that actually they're very good people, full of wisdom and faith. Now, there are some gifts which are, which are very visible. So, like gifts of healing, for example. I've been to healing services. 
working of miracles. There are also sometimes church miracle services. Very visible. And sometimes we become very envious. How come that person has all these visible gifts and I have an invisible gift of faith or wisdom and so on? So it, it can be contentious comparing gifts to each other. And then you may wish, how come you're not like me, you can preach? Preaching is a very visible gift. But I tell you, it's a very dangerous gift unless you know how to use it properly. Just read the letter to James that those are teachers should be very careful of who they are. So the Holy Spirit is a helper in giving us gifts. Let us ask God to give us the right gift to make us unique, loved by God, and embody us accordingly. Don't be, a, don't be a worried about asking God too much. Very often, uh, we dare not ask. We think God is so great, he doesn't care for me. But he cares for you. But you must ask the right gift. Ask him for discernment. And then he'll give the right gift. But then comes the last of the work of the Holy Spirit. How he's really a helper. And this is found in the next slide, which says that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, humility, and self-control. Now you notice that the word is singular. It's not fruits. The nine listed is word, is fruit. One fruit has eight, nine dimensions to it. And this is what really counts, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Now fruit, as you know, has the capacity to reproduce. From seed, you get another crop. Uh, if you have just a gift, it may not bear fruit. We must try to change our gifts into fruit, which can continue, which can reproduce, which can grow. But this fruit uh, requires patience, requires, uh, there must be nurture, there must be uh, fertilizer, whatever it is, to make the fruit, to make to make fruit grow, to make fruit grow. The goal of the Holy Spirit is for you and I to bear fruit. God's purpose in helping us through the Holy Spirit is that we can abundant life, bear abundant fruit here. You might say, where can I find the fruit? Ah, if you look around yourself, if you've identified Christians, they would have the gift of the Holy Spirit in them. Every Christian is a spirit which has received the Holy Spirit in, in them. When you are baptized, you are baptized uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit enters you when you become a Christian, when you make an affirmation of faith. But this Holy Spirit uh, has to be discerned by those around. So let me give you an example. Every Saturday morning, I have a prayer group. So come and join us, 8 o'clock on Saturday morning, room 209, and there are five of us. And I can see that in each of the five, there's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Um, the five are Tinkiet, Ketlun, Patrick, Simon, and myself. I think I, Ketlun has the gift of patience, uh, has the fruit of the fruit of patience among these ninefold, ninefold fruit. Yeah, I think Patrick has the fruit of goodness. I think uh, Tinkiet has the fruit of self-control. Uh, that's Tinkiet, Ketlun, Patrick. Uh, Simon has the fruit of patience. Now guess, what is my fruit? <laughs> Which of the nine do you think do I 
do I bear the most fruit? Then, can I give a clue? Well, <laughs> the fruit I have is my name. What is my name? My name is An. What does An mean? An means peace. So I, I trust, I hope that <laughs> wherever I go, I, I radiate peace. Because my grandmother who gave me this name, uh, she, she gave uh, different names to different members of, the, of my siblings. That, that's one sibling of mine who got, who got the gift of uh, kindness. His name is Jin Ren. Yeah. So anyway, my grandmother was a Christian, and she, she must have known this fruit of the Spirit, and she gave my brother kindness. She gave me peace in, my, in our names, so that whenever I go around, I, I don't need a Christian name, because my name itself is a Christian name. Because you don't mind find people giving yourself names of peace and kindness unless you're a Christian. Uh, I don't name myself Jonathan or David or whatever it is. But these are the real fruit of the Spirit. So you can see how wonderful our gathering on Saturday night, Saturday morning is, that we are sharing the fruit of the Spirit to each other. And so you and I can go around, we build up friendships. In our church now, we have 30 or 40 cell groups. Uh, build up your fruit among yourselves. Discover each other. And you can just open up new boundaries of how the Holy Spirit can work in your life and in my life. So I want to thank God that God has, is in me. The Holy Spirit is God in me, in you. Jesus, God, the, the Son, is God with us. Emmanuel, following us through life. And then God the Father is the God of the creation of the whole world, of every human being. It's not three gods. It's one God, one Godhead, but three persons. The person of God the Father, the person of God the Son, the person of God the Holy Spirit. And today, we celebrate the coming, the full disclosure of God the Holy Spirit, the person of God the Holy Spirit. Maybe through all through your life, you have known God the Father and God the Son. Wonderful. Come and experience now God the Holy Spirit in your life. God blessing you with a connectivity to other people, to God the Father and God the Son. God blessing you with gifts. And then last but not least, God bearing fruit in you. God the Spirit, Holy Spirit bearing fruit in you. In these three ways, Jesus' promise comes true. He went away to heaven, seated on the right hand of God, but in his place is the helper. The helper is the Holy Spirit. He's your helper, my helper. And we are helped in our daily walk with God because of God, the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit coming to our lives and uh, help us in our journey amid problems and difficulties. We know that you can overcome them because we can bear the fruit and the fruit can go to any kind of trouble or, or disappointment because it will last. God did promise and we want to claim that promise that the Holy Spirit is our helper in our walk through life. Praise in Jesus' name. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, let us sing the communion hymn, Consider Christ. Come, let us rise.
Are you able to hear this? Yes. Okay. Ah, there. Thank you, Pastor. Suan, thank you for the message. It's refreshing to remind ourselves of why we are here. It's the Holy Spirit who's drawn us to this place. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us the privilege to worship openly and friendly, freely in His presence. And then it's the Holy Spirit that draws us into oneness, true oneness, with all the gifts. They stand and fall together. Yes, peace, yes, gentleness, yes, self-control. But they all must manifest in us in the fullness of His Spirit as we gather. Well, let me remind you, we are here to do something that our dear Lord commanded us to do. It's a privilege for us to do. It gives us exposure to the dynamic Holy Spirit that moves among us, stirs our hearts, feeds our soul, calls us into deeper commitment. But let me also remind you that this is a, a sacred service. It is a sacrament of the church. And so all those who have been baptized into Christ Jesus, all those who have been confirmed in their faith, whether in this church or in one of the churches of the communion of the Jesus Christ, the branches of the church, you are welcome and you are invited in his name to come to this table and share in the Lord's Supper. Dearly beloved, all that humbly put their trust in Christ and desire his help, that they may lead a holy life, all that are truly sorry for their sins and would be delivered from the burden of them are invited and encouraged in his name to come to this sacrament. So let us so come that we may find refreshment and rest unto our souls. As we draw near to the Lord's table to celebrate the Holy Communion of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, we are gratefully to remember that our Lord instituted this sacrament for several reasons. First, for the perpetual memory of his dying for our sakes and a pledge of his undying love to us. Second, as a bond of our union with him and with each other as members of his mystical body because of the Holy Spirit. Third, as a seal of his promises to us and a renewal of our obedience to him, he has promised, he keeps his promises, and we are to respond in true faithful obedience. Fourth, for the blessed assurance of his presence with us who are gathered here in his name, and lastly, as a pledge of his coming again. Come, Lord Jesus, come. And now in his name I take these elements to be set apart by prayer and thanksgiving for the holy use for which he has appointed them. Let's say this together. O oh God, who by the life and death and rising again of your dear Son has consecrated for us a new and living way into the holiest of all, cleanse our minds, we pray, for the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that drawing near to you with a pure heart and undefiled conscience, we may receive these your gifts without sin, worthily magnify your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is most appropriate that we should be always thanking you, O oh Lord, for all your gifts to us. But most important of all, we want to praise you. And I'd like to do these five acts of praise together. This is we praising him. As it says in the book of Hebrews in chapter 13, we are to offer the sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of our lips in his name. So let's do this together. 
Just add three words. Praise you. Uh, we praise you. Thank you. Uh -huh, you're better than I. You remember the way I used to do it. <laughs> All right. Let's go it together. We praise you for your great love by which you have drawn us to yourself in Christ. We praise you for cleansing us from all our sins. We praise you for giving us new life by your Spirit. We praise you for acknowledging us to be your children and for giving us the opportunity to serve you all the rest of our lives. What a privilege. Therefore, with the angels and all the saves, saved and all of all ages and all nations, we praise and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven, hallelujah. Thou art worthy, thou art worthy, thou gracious God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose once offering up of himself upon the cross we commemorate before you, we earnestly desire your fatherly goodness to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving together. And here we offer and present to you ourselves, our souls, our bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice completely dedicated to you. Please accept us and continue your work in us until your ultimate purpose is accomplished and we become like Christ. We pray in his name. Amen. And by his spirit. Uh, I'm not used to working online, but for those of you who are online, we are going to take the community together and we're using the, the uh, combined element of the grape and the bread. So uh, as we distribute these elements, and you should be preparing at home as well, uh, and I will lead you as far as to taking them of the bread and the cup. But uh, at this point, we will distribute the elements. So with the elder... Uh, our Lord Jesus Christ took the bread, and we had given thanks... He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Please. And as is our custom, please wait and we will take the bread together.
Is there anyone who hasn't been able to receive? Please let the elders know by raising your hand, if so. So would everybody first, before you stand, remove the first part of the communion service, just the bread part, and prepare that. Now that you're prepared, please rise and let us take the bread together. Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Please be seated. If you'd begin to also peel the second part in preparation. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Do you believe that, my brothers and sisters? It is a privilege for us to come together. So after the same manner, our Savior took the cup, and having given thanks again, he gave it to his disciples and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is said for the forgiveness of sins. So let us take the cup together. Please stand and let us take the cup together. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin, past, present, and future. Do you believe that, my brothers and sisters? What a privilege we have to be covered by the blood of Christ. What a great, great privilege. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Let us confess the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the death. On the third day he rose again, he ascended to heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Together. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, to be a light for the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Strengthen us continually with your Holy Spirit, 
that we may serve you in faith and love by word and deed until at last we come to the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. As we wrap up our service, let us rise and sing our closing hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages now and forevermore. Amen. my brothers and sisters we have come to the end of the, the service uh, let the post will be a time for us to continue our meditation and response to the Lord after the post anyone who liked the elders to pray for you can come forward and also as a reminder a bus group leaders please proceed to conference room for the bus group leaders briefing uh, right after the service and we look forward to see you at the camp on this coming Friday at 9.30 here in the sanctuary. God's peace and blessings be with you. Amen.